Okay, guys, and so for lab 10, you need to know freezing point depression, freezing point graphs, uh, change in del uh, or DT, change in temperature, equals negative Km, and vapor pressure. So I thought it would be good to start off with a graph that talks about what we did in class. So we took the temperature um, of acetic acid as it froze and we took it at different points in time so we construct using those points in time we constructed a graph of its temperature versus its time now this section that I've highlighted in purple um, it is what is what what's happening there is that you are undergoing the heat of fusion which is that how much energy is required to freeze your substance so during that period what's occurring is our substance is going from a liquid to a solid and that is basically how you can tell that it's a freezing point is because it's a nice straight line kind of from right there to right there so during this whole period it's freezing and so then we froze it with uh, another mixture and we saw that there was basically a depression and freezing point so I'll just try to kind of draw what our graph might look like. Um, so it might have looked kind of like, let's say this. And the distance here is your delta t from our equation. So I'm going to go ahead and write in here this distance right there. That is your delta t. That is the, the change in freezing point because now our freezing point is beginning here and finishing here and that is now your new freezing point for this mixture and so that the distance between those two lines is your delta t and let's say we froze a third substance now this this substance may have super cooled maybe you had your bath a little bit too cold and so we'll see it come back up and then freeze and then continue going back down so this area right here that is supercooling and then uh, and if you want to know more about supercooling you can go into your lab 10 and find supercooling which it appears to be on page 66 so here it talks about super supercooling um, so you can read about that right there uh, I will not go in and explain it but so that basically is how you find your freezing point you look for the where your substance flatlines and that is your your freezing point um, so that's kind of covers the graphs and a lot of you weren't sure what to do with the equation that you were given this delta t equals uh, km equals negative km equation so the idea is that you find this k which is going to tell you you know how much of our substance or how much will adding this much of our substance lower our freezing point and so to find that you just have to rearrange this equation so you basically divide both sides by m and obviously this uh, these m's will cancel out and don't forget about the negative so we'll actually multiply both sides by negative one making this a positive so then your k is just going to be or your kf is just going to be negative delta t over m and m is your molarity um, so that ex or um, yeah the molal sorry not molarity molality um, so that's going to be your molal concentration of the solute present in the solvent so that'll be whatever quantity you're adding um, to this to this uh, problem. Okay, so that should mostly cover lab 10. Uh, you also need to know what vapor pressure is and when it will increase or decrease. So obviously we are adding um, something to our our mix that's going to be affecting our vapor point or our vapor pressure. So if you go into the bottom of this uh, lab, there's a little section that that's, says environmental science note, and it kind of talks a little bit about a good example, which is antifreeze. So lab nine was all about vapor pressure, so you guys didn't really get to cover much of vapor pressure, but vapor pressure is essentially, um, if we have some sort of beaker, and we have some sort of liquid in it the vapor pressure is how much 
of this liquid will evaporate before the air becomes saturated. So if it's in a closed vessel, we'll make this a little closed vessel, how much of it will be allowed to evaporate before this air reaches a basically a 100 percent um, if you think if it's water it would be a 100 percent moisture um, if it's some other gas it'll be until it reaches saturation and that 100 percent will be that that vapors or that liquid saturation pr uh, pressure so now what happens with when we add a some sort of uh, either liquid or solid like an like antifreeze to another liquid, well, that's basically going to lower the vapor pressure of that liquid. And if we think about it, if like for example, in the in the case of antifreeze, so before we had, this is kind of zooming in, we're zooming into this little section right here. And so before we had pure water, right? Um, but now, what do we have? Now we've got pure water mixed with, let's say, some antifreeze. So let's say this little, there's a little blob of antifreeze right here and a little bit of antifreeze right here as well. So now what's going to happen if this antifreeze has a really low um, or really high boiling, po boiling point or a really low vapor pressure? Those are the same things. Uh, high boiling point just means that it's not going to be releasing a lot of vapor. Uh, so in essence what's happening is the the pressure or the allowed evaporation from the water is going to be decreased significantly because now instead of having all of these spots to evaporate from it's only going to have it's going to ha not have this guy anymore and it's not going to have this guy anymore because now they're taking up by whatever you mixed in so in this case antifreeze so you're going to be decreasing the vapor pressure of this liquid significantly by adding a certain quantity of antifreeze. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. I know that was kind of a very brief explanation, but you guys haven't been exposed a lot to vapor pressure. So if you still have questions about that, go ahead and read the environmental science note on page 68 of lab number 10, which is the freezing point depression lab. And if you're still curious, you can go ahead and read all about uh, lab nine. Um, but I don't think there are going to be any questions related to Lab 9 on the test since we had to skip that one. Okay, so that brings us to the next lab.